Now, before we get to the study of Peter, I, I wanna look really at just two very quick nuggets of truth that we can get from this story that, that I think are too good for us to pass up. Before we get into Peter and his journey of what brought him out of the boat and on the sea and later in the sea, I wanna look at these two nuggets of truth. The first nugget of truth is this. Jesus needed time alone with God. How much more do I need to carve out time alone with God? Did you see what that was in verse 23? He says, he sent the multitudes away and he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, don't let this pass you by because this is the son of God. This is the great I am. This is the Messiah Savior who is perfect in every way and he needed time alone with God. I am humbled every time I read those words because I am a sinner saved by the grace and the mercy of our Lord. I am struggling to get it right every day. How much more should I daily carve out time to spend with the Father? How much more do I need to have a prayer life that cries out, Lord, I need you. Show up today in a mighty way. If Jesus the Messiah had to send the disciples away, some people say the disciples were just that difficult, he needed time away. I can understand that. If you work with Matt, <laughs> you need time away, okay? I'm not dismissing that. You need some time alone, but it's not simply time alone from the people who always are at your door, always asking questions, always needing something. It's time with the Father. Are we spending quality time with the Father? Are we turning off the cell phones, unplugging from life and spending time praying? That is a nugget that's far too great for us to pass up this morning. Nugget number two, and this is important, that just because you're in a storm doesn't mean you're being punished for disobedience. Look at how this, this section starts. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go to the other side while he sent the crowd away. Jesus instructed the disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side. The storm didn't surprise Jesus. Jesus knew he was sending his disciples into a storm. And oftentimes when we're in the midst of a storm, we go, man, God, what did I do wrong? But in scripture, we see two types of storms. There are storms basically of disobedience, storms of correction. When we're off track and we need a storm to get us back on track, it's a storm of correction. Remember the story of Jonah. Jonah was running from God and God sent a storm of correction. And sometimes when we're in the midst of a storm, it's because we're running from God and his will and his way. And God needs to get us back on track, just like he did with Jonah. But they're not only storms of correction, there are storms of perfection. You can be smack dab in the middle of God's will. You can be in the middle of his plan for your life and my life and there be a storm that causes you to row and to struggle and to be frustrated. We know that this is the, the, the middle of the watch that is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. We know that Jesus sent them away right after dinner time. They were struggling rowing against. It says the wind was contrary. It says they rowed and they rowed and they rowed and they weren't going anywhere. Why? Because the wind was contrary. Some of us, that is a perfect description of where we are right now. We're rowing, we're working, we have effort, we're frustrated because it just doesn't seem like we're going anywhere. And we're in the middle of a storm of perfection. God is trying to strengthen you, to grow you, to increase your faith in him. And we need to know that just because we're in the middle of a storm, whether it's a health storm or a relationship storm, or maybe it's a faith storm, that man, you're doubting and you're struggling and you're rowing like crazy and you're not seeming to progress at all. That God is trying to do something great in you. These disciples in the midst of the night were rowing and rowing. We, they, they, they rowed about three to three and a half miles. They're in the middle of the sea. They're in the midst of a storm where they just can't get past it. And they're frustrated. And then we see our character, Peter. And really we see a few things about Peter and the disciples that we can learn from this morning. Beyond those two nuggets of truth, First of all, we, we see that fear 
can really lead us to, to not only frustration, but fear leads to confusion. Look at what they said. They said basically they saw him walking on water. Now that's not something you see every day. But it, they cried out, it's a what? It's a ghost. Now if you'd asked the disciples just moments before when they were eating fish and bread with the, with the multitudes, the thousands. Hey, Bartholomew, do you believe in ghosts? Hey, Thomas, do you believe in ghosts? He says, I doubt it. He says, hey, John, do you, some of y'all, okay. <laughs> they would probably say, no, 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 no. But in the middle of the night, in the middle of the storm, when stuff, it's Jesus, looks like Jesus, walking like Jesus, but it's a ghost. Because oftentimes our fear leads us to confusion. When you have fear in a relationship and it brings jealousy, all of a sudden your imagination goes wild and you're confused and you think things that you normally in your right mind logically wouldn't believe. If there's health issues, you start, you mean your imagination goes crazy and your fear leads to confusion. These disciples didn't believe in ghosts, but in the middle of their fear, that was their screams and, and proclamations of here comes a ghost, and they were fearful. Second Timothy 1, 7, it says, for God did not give us, has not given us a spirit of fear, but he gives us a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. When we eliminate fear in our lives, because when we have fear, fear in our lives, we're gonna be confused. We're gonna be really totally off of our logical, faithful thinking. When we are surrounded by, engulfed in fear, it never allows us to think right. Just think if you have teenagers. In the middle of the night, they're not, they didn't make curfew. Fear strikes immediately. And instead of you just going, they were having too good of a time and they're running 15 minutes late and of course they didn't text because you know, they don't text when we pay for the phones but they don't use the phones except for their benefit. I, I'm ranting now. Um, <laughs> what is your mind? All of a sudden, they've been abducted by aliens. You know, something crazy. Oh man, what, the most tragic thing has happened. Why? Because fear leads to confusion. And when we enter into a spiritual journey and there's fear and there's a storm and there's a, a wind that is contrary that doesn't allow us to progress, our fear allows our imaginations to go confused and frustrated. Fear leads to confusion. But check it out. This is awesome because the next one is faith leads to opportunity. Faith leads to opportunity. Look at what, what Peter in, in his great boldness and faith. He says, Jesus says, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said on the water because Jesus may have said, can you swim? Because you can come out here, but it's a storm and you're gonna swim. No, command that I come to you on the water, if you, Jesus, can walk on water, I have the faith that you can call me out of the boat to walk on water. Faith leads to great opportunities. Jesus was walking out to them, calms their fears, said, it is I, you don't need to be afraid, I'm coming to rescue you, I'm coming to bring peace in the midst of the storm. He hadn't stopped the storm yet. I'm coming to be the comfort and the rock in the midst of the storm. And Peter, with great courageous faith, says, Jesus, if it's you, call me. And Jesus, with one word, come. And it, it wasn't a boat much bigger than, than this stage. And all the disciples are looking, shaking their head. This is really the first time that Peter does anything crazy that is recorded in Scripture. And Peter had to take that first step. He had to step over that boat and step out onto that wave, not knowing if he was gonna sink like a rock or miraculously walk on the water. Faith allowed him the opportunity. 
If you can look in your life, God is calling you out of your boat. So many of us know what it means to be a Christian. So many of us know exactly what God wants us to do. So many of us know what scripture is telling us and commanding us to walk in faithfulness and we will not get out of the boat. We're so comfortable in that boat. Get out of the boat. It's not knowledge, it is faith. It's not understanding of, oh God, I just don't know what you want me to do here. I know what I want you to do. Stand up and be bold for me. Be an ambassador, be a voice, be a light. Share with your neighbors, love your enemies. That's what I want you to do and I'm calling you to get out of the boat. So many of us are sitting on the sidelines like a participant and God is saying, get out of the boat. Walk out in faith. It was 1990, I was 19 years old. I just spent a year in a storm. It's called your freshman year in college, okay? I was rowing and the wind was contrary. I had grown, I had stumbled, I had had faith and success, I had had failure. And I wanted to go to camp, it was our youth camp, it was an Alto, Alto Frio Baptist encampment out in the kind of the southern part of the hill country. I loved it, I'd been one time as a student, I wanted to go as a leader. Back then we had something called a junior counselor. It was somebody who was 19, okay? That's a junior counselor. You're not old enough to actually go and make a difference, but we're gonna take you, because you have lots of energy and you can stay up later than the 40 year olds, okay? I say that as a 40 year old. Um, and so I said, man, I, I told our youth pastor, I'd love, love to go as a junior counselor, and he said, done. And they pair the junior counselors with a, a, of a more senior counselor, someone who's older, like 30 or 40, and, and they lead a group of about 12 to 16 students. And so I show up, students I don't know from different churches and different age groups, and I show up to meet my co-counselor, who's gonna be my leader. And she had fear in her eyes. She said, I signed up to be a chaperone, not a counselor. I just got this book of lessons yesterday. I hope you can teach. It's the first time I had been rowing in a storm for a year. I wasn't a teacher. I was pretty much a brand new Christian trying to figure things out. And God said, come. Jesus said, get out of the boat. I will be enough for you. But God, I don't know enough. God, what if they don't listen? I'm barely older than some of these kids. Come. And I stepped out of the boat with faith in God. And God did a miraculous work. It was amazing. First time I'd ever taught God's word. And these students got it and they listened, not because of me, but because God through me did a miraculous thing. That was the first taste I ever had of how much fun it can be teaching God's word and making a difference in the lives of people who are hungry for change. God's calling us to step out of the boat. Will you be faithful? Because if you do, the opportunity is tremendous. If you do, God will work a miraculous work. Do you, you think it, it, what you're called to do is gonna be harder than walking on water? Peter walked on water because he was obedient, because he was faithful, because he understood what God calls you to do, he will equip you to do. What God calls you out of the boat in the midst of a, a storm, he will supply everything you need to bring you through that storm. Then the next thing we learn from Peter, and this is in perfect Peter fashion, and I said it very positively here, focus leads to success. Focus leads to success. When you're focused on your goal, when you're focused on Jesus in the midst of the storm, you're gonna successfully walk on water. And Peter does that. We don't know how many steps he took, seven steps or 70 steps. But we know for a good portion of, of stepping on water, the waves were crashing, Jesus was standing, the disciples were in amazement, and Peter was walking on water. But unfortunately, losing focus leads to failure. Look at verse 30. It said, and come in verse 29, and Peter came down out of the boat. He walked on water to go to Jesus, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous. One translation says, when he saw the wind, when he looked, how do you see wind? 
You can't. What, what takes our focus off the Messiah? Things that aren't even there. Things that you can't even see. Peter's looking at Jesus and he's walking to Jesus and miraculously he's coming, approaching the Messiah. And then it says, and he looked at the wind and his focus was off the Savior and he began to sink immediately. When you lose focus, when you're walking in God's plan, when you're following his perfect will for your life and my life, when we take our eyes off Jesus, we will sink and we will fail. I love, there's, there's so, many, so many great athletic illustrations here of runners who are running across the finish line. There's one runner in college and he's about to finish, I think it was the 800 and he starts doing this and pumping up the crowd and as he's looking at the crowd doing this, a guy runs right by him and wins the race because he lost focus. How many times that when you see someone who doesn't keep their eye on the ball, they drop it, they strike out. It's all about focus. The writer of Hebrews says that we're running our race with endurance. We're throwing off the things that entangle us, that, that hinder us, and we're keeping our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And when we're in the midst of a storm and we're miraculously obeying God's call to come, if we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, we will succeed. When we get distracted by the things on the right and the left, the winds, the result of the wind, we will sink and fail. And that's exactly what Peter did. It says when, it, when he saw that the wind was boisterous and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. How do you begin to sink? I, I've, I've sunk a couple times, okay? It's not a slow process. It's not like quicksand, whoa, here I go. It's boop, I'm gone. It, and so in that moment, when he took his focus off Jesus and he was going down, he cried out. He didn't cry out, oh, these winds are difficult. Oh, I'm saying, Jesus, save me. He went back to what his focus should have never been off of, the Savior who was standing in front of him, the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. And that really leads us to our last point, that failure, and this is a beautiful point, leads to grace. Failure leads to grace. And as he cried out, Jesus or Lord save me, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, what we think is just, just brow beating, Jesus is so frustrated, this is a coaching moment, oh you of little faith. I can picture because I'm competitive and with boys and brother, you just figure this, what are the disciples doing back in the boat? Psh, Peter. Of course, took your eyes off Jesus and you sunk and had to cry out and be rescued. But where are they? In the boat. He says, Peter, you have little faith. Those guys in the boat that are laughing at you, they have no faith. They don't even have faith to step out of the boat. At least you had a little faith. And he tells us later that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, that we can do amazing things. Peter, you of little faith. And he did, he had little faith. But he had enough faith to step out of the boat and come to the Savior. Then he had enough distraction to take his eyes off where he needed to cry out to a Savior. And the greatest news I have, better than their nuggets of truth, is that we have a Savior who's ready to catch you. We have a Savior who wants to rescue you from yourself, from your sin, from this world. We have a savior who is so full of grace and love and forgiveness, but he's waiting for you to cry out. If Peter wouldn't have said, Lord, save me, I think he would have been doggy paddling back to the boat. But when he cried out, Jesus reaches out, which means that Peter had enough faith to get close enough where Jesus was in an arm's length away and he grabs him and picks him up. 
and they walk back together to the boat. Changed. Peter had faith. He did lose focus, but he had faith to step out of the boat. What is God calling you to step out to today? Maybe to teach, maybe to share, maybe to love, maybe to serve. Whatever your next step is, I promise you, God doesn't want you to be complacent. I know that God doesn't want you just to stay right where you are and play it safe. Faith takes us out of the boat to follow and to pursue and to chase after our Lord Jesus Christ. But some of us right now, we're not out of the boat. We're just crying, Lord, save us. We're, we're barely surviving in the waves and the winds of the storm and we're sinking fast. And we need to know that Jesus is the only one that saves. That trip in 1990 when God used me because I was just a little bit of faith and being thrown out of the boat, basically. In the midst of me teaching, I was able to give my testimony. There was a young man named Jody who was staying in our cabin. I didn't know Jody, but he walked up to me and said, your testimony is my testimony. I see something in you, and I need this Jesus that you're talking about. And at 19, I was able to lead my first person that I'd ever led his name was Jody and I, I bent down and I stumbled and fumbled and led a prayer Jesus I know that I'm a sinner and he prayed it and I need, know that I need a savior and he prayed it and right then and there his eternity was changed and I was beyond cloud nine maybe God's calling you to share your faith with somebody a co-worker a friend a neighbor a family member Maybe he's calling you to say, you know what? I was once lost, but Jesus Christ reached down and rescued me. And now I'm far from perfect, but I am forgiven by the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Your story and how he's changed you to renew you and bring you life. God's calling us out of the boat. Will you listen? Will you come?